most food is grown thousands of miles away and it's shipped in. And the shipping cost, the long distance traveling, coming from other countries, that's not being very green. People don't realize that most of all energy used in this country is in food in one way or another. It's either in the growing of it, the shipping of it, driving to the grocery store to buy it, you're taking it home and cooking it. So those are all energy sources that are being used in food one way or another. Local food closer to the source, the better it is for the planet and better for you. Being local uh, to your customers uh, has many many benefits. One of them is shipping, and you're reducing reducing shipping, reducing trucks on, on the road. Growing vegetables and herbs is something that that should be in in every state. So there really really no reason to have somebody from five states away supplying people in the stores down the street from us. The biggest pullback for local in Connecticut is our New England season. Uh, in an area like uh, the Northeast, I mean, we have a fairly limited growing season, uh, about four months outside. Greenhouse growing uh, uh, is important because it, it, it gives you an element of control over, over production. Uh, we can control the environment, so if you can control the environment, you can control plant growth. And, uh, and it also can be done at a season, which is important. So if you look at the productivity per square foot in a greenhouse versus a field, it's very high. If you're growing, say, cash grains, you may be getting $600 per acre on gross productivity. If you grow in, in the field, say, fruits and vegetables, it's 6000 to 10000 per acre. And then if you look at productivity in the greenhouse in dollar amounts, it's, it's 100 times higher than that. So we're talking about gross sales of 500 600 700000 dollars per acre per year. Growing in the greenhouse and the ground has a lot of liabilities. The problem is the plants are in the same place all the time. Out in the field you would rotate the location to reduce disease pressures. So we tend to get a lot of uh, problems built up over time and the productivity will go down. One way around that would be some form of hydroponics, whether it's strict water culture, which is the definition of hydroponics, or grown in an artificial media, which is more typical. Down in Arizona, there's a very big greenhouse operation. It's about over 300 acres. They grow plants about 10 months of the year, and they grow them in a very small root volume. So plants are 30 foot tall, producing 60 pounds of tomatoes for an individual plant. In a root volume, that's not much more than a quart size. Yeah, well, I mean, you would need really huge fields to grow this much lettuce. And by having it in these channels that we can take out and bring and harvest, we don't have to have row packs every four feet for walking like you would have to have in a, in a field. So our hydroponic system works by um, the water that contains all the nutrients for the plant goes through these tubes and is constantly circulating down the channel, back to a tank, and then it gets pumped back through. It's a sort of endless loop. The benefit of doing that is you have very precise control over nutrient levels and then you can also control um, the fertility and the crop response a lot closer. The expenses have gone up tremendously the, the last few years between electricity and fuel and, and everybody feels the effect of that. Well, energy cost is the big one. Um, you know, we, every year we kind of go back and forth. Should we keep the greenhouses going during the winter? Should we not? It's fairly energy intensive. Um, we can use alternative energies, and you'll, you're seeing a lot of, say, wood chip burning and, and uh, things like that. We had, um, we had been thinking about a wood chip boiler for a while, and especially as oil got, got pricey. When oil started hitting $4 a gallon back a few years ago, uh, we kind of jumped in with both feet. Uh, it's, been a it, it's been a struggle because the equipment wasn't really tried and true at the time. We had some had to work some bugs out, but it's been very successful and 
to date, we've burned a half a million gallons of oil less than we would have. The way our wood chip oil works, we, first off, it starts with wood chips that uh, we'll get from local arborists. We screen them and we put them through a auger system in some chain conveyors and they go into the back of the boiler and it burns, uh, burns all day long and heats up water and that water is uh, sent throughout the greenhouse and that's, that's how we heat the greenhouse. There's research going on uh, internationally right now using geothermal so they can collect the heat from the greenhouse during the day and put it into the, into the ground and pull it up at night or pull it up out of season. Geothermal is really something that we have much interest in. Uh, we're talking to some engineers from, from Holland that have built a couple greenhouses using just the, just the heat from the ground to, to heat up their greenhouses. Is it feasible in the Northeast? We really need a, a real solid test on, on this, but we really feel that geothermal could be the future, uh, but we have to understand it more. And uh, I've got to say, we don't understand it enough. To help keep our farms in business is what's going to help us be fed locally. We have an uncertain marketplace at times with a uh, with all the stores getting larger and larger and, and we're importing more and more of our fresh food. Consumers will have a big influence over the popularity and the demand by expressing consumer demand. So if you're buying local crops, more people will step in and provide those. It's a business and a free market type of situation that's going on. So the higher the demand, the more opportunity there are for individual entrepreneurs to come in and try to, try to fill that need. As far as supporting local food, I mean, one of the most important things is to just know a farmer and be invested in your community. I think the support has grown so much the last couple of years. It's tremendous. We're packed in here in the summertime. You come in on a, a Friday afternoon or a Saturday morning, and when the wood coupons come out and the local people come in, it's, it's shoulder to shoulder inside. Mm -hmm.